Hi there. What's up? I'm Ola, an inhabitant of Lightbulb Moment, aka digital entrepreneur, a proud aunt, and a goofy nerd. I'm Chris, a designer, a creative tech enthusiast, and a semi-grown kid. This is the Ranting Bananas podcast. It sound right, boy. This is a letter to my future son. I hope you know that you the one. Hope you know the list is short. Welcome back to episode two, a series we're calling Big Questions. And Ola, on the episode one, on, well, the last second of episode one, dropped a humongous bomb. Tell us what happened. Right. Um. Yes, so I was, uh, uh, we're approaching a big question of, uh, of pregnancy, right? And, and potential abortion of childbearing, having kids, big questions. Um, and when you came to me, we were talking about it and I, I, you know, I couldn't help but, but think from my own, obviously my own context and my own point of view um and that point of view comes from uh obviously my experience and my experience is that i also got pregnant um a couple of years back and 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 i chose to have an abortion so i think it was it was important to disclose it to our audience to our listeners because i think otherwise i felt like i'd be hiding a subject that could somehow dictate my point of views throughout the series. Um, I have spoken about this to my parents and some of my closer friends, but I haven't really opened up about it with the bigger circle. So it was a bit of a of a conundrum for me as well when we were talking about doing this this series, whether I should be opening about it or not. And and then it kind of made me think. Why is it okay that we're doing this whole series on Chris getting a girl pregnant? And then, like, I feel a bit, you know, like, ashamed or a bit scared to talk about my own experience with this. So I think, you know, at the heart of it is the desire to take away the taboo um, and just kind of, like, shine a light on it and just kind of, yeah, live my truth and just be okay with with what happened. And I don't think I ever felt shame for what happened. It's just kind of thinking about, oh, my God, uh, I'll be talking about it in an open forum. What does this really mean? And it's like, is this okay? So I think there was a bit of fear about that. But, um, but yeah, I'm happy to. I'm happy to to dive into it. And I think we'll, we'll do, like, a proper dive in separately in another episode, um, another series. But for the purpose of this series, yeah, I thought it was important to bring it up, give my context, and, like, honestly say where I'm coming from, right? So... Sure. Why don't you walk us through (laughs) what happened? Okay. Um, So a couple of uh, years back, I um, I got pregnant. Um, Originally, I was struggling with um, with some hormonal issues, massive stress induced uh, hormonal issues that basically put me in perimenopause. So for those of you who don't know what that is. it's essentially the stage before menopause. So my level of hormones was so out of whack that I basically didn't have my period. Um, so I had to deal with a lot of stuff. I, I took a break from work and I just kind of like tried in many different different ways to, to be better. Uh, went through like loads of different medications. Finally, stuff started working. Um, and uh, we had been regulating stuff with hormones. So obviously that means the pill, and then I started seeing a semblance of like having my regular period again. Um, so then there was a moment of just not being on the pill. I think it was like to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, and I was with I was with somebody at that point. Um, and who knew exact moment when that was happening? I was ovulating, and um, funnily enough, we had just decided to go on a break. I find out. I'm pregnant. So. <laughs> Fuck, man. That's crazy. Not far off from your situation in a way, because you, you took like a physical break. Like you left. You freaking left the country. 
um, but but we at that point we were like okay you know uh, the relationship was not going anywhere and and we decided to have a break and just kind of like okay take a moment to really think about it so in my mind it was it was kind of going to be the end of it uh, but then this, right? And I just remember, I remember I was with my friend, um, Andrea, big shout out to her. I know she's going to be listening to this. Um, and, and I was just kind of like, man, I've been kind of feeling nauseated and, uh, and kind of just unwell. And I think my boobs are kind of hurting. And she's like, dude, are you pregnant? And I was like, what? That's not possible. Because of all the struggles that I had been going through, I was like, this is no way possible. Uh, it was so like you know it was like absurd to me it was like there was no way in hell that was possible but then yeah but then i i did three tests and it's so hilarious because uh i was feeling unwell so i had headed home um and i was like i can't even stop at a pharmacy because i was feeling so unwell and it was like one of the worst I, d- I don't know how other people's pregnancies are, but just from what I've been hearing, reading, etc. For me, it was one of the worst things ever. I was throwing up nonstop. I was just feeling sick, weak, like not able to just do anything. So I went home and I was like, okay, I need a pregnancy test. So what you're able to do online is uh, order like a favor. So someone will just, you know, go and get whatever you need. So you just kind of type in what you need. So I typed in favor and that I needed them to go to a pharmacy. And I was like, get me a pregnancy test, but please make sure that it's three different brands of pregnancy tests. Because I was like, you know what? The batch could be wrong. And so it's better safe than sorry. If you have three tests from different producers, uh, you know, it just statistics right <laughs> playing the math game uh so I- science alert <laughs> science alert i like it keep, keep going yeah the scientific approach to finding out you're pregnant um so it's like okay order this thing and while i'm doing that i'm on the phone with my best friend tara and I'm like, dude, I'm freaking out. You know, Andrea just told me I might be pregnant. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? I ordered these tests. Can you just stay on the phone with me and just kind of like um, go through this with me? She's like, okay, why don't you drink lots of water so that you can actually do these three tests? So like while I'm at it, I'm like drinking like two times this much of water, right? So, and it says 15 minutes. <laughs> She's just chugging this thing, like drinking, drinking, drinking. Um, and waiting for this guy. And then this guy messages me. He's like, um, they don't have three different brands. So I'm going to go to another pharmacy. Can you wait? And I was like, okay, that's fine. But instead of 15 minutes, it ended up being 50 minutes. And I needed to pee so, so badly, guys. Like, my bladder is tiny. Like, I need to pee all the time throughout the day. Even if I don't drink, I drink. It's like 1.5 liters of water or two liters. And I was like, talking to Tara, I'm like, dude, I really need to pee, but we can't waste this pee now. Like, we need to keep it. She's like, get Tupperware. Oh, God, that's (laughs) disgusting. That's so nasty, man. Fuck, you nasty. I have a photo of this. Obviously, I didn't pee in my Tupperware, guys. Obviously, because I'm gonna use Come on, you my can't Tupperware. say not... that. You can't. You can't just drop I, that. And then there's just silence. I was not. Gonna, I was not gonna pee in my Tupperware because I want to use my Tupperware. So I was like, "What if I pee in a Ziploc bag, though?" That's worse. That's worse. It's like the aim is like you got to be well good. No, that's way worse. <laughs> Such it's a mess. A big, it's a big Ziploc bag. It's fine. But anyway, I have a photo, so maybe we'll post it in here. But um, so I'm just like sitting over the toilet, peeing into the Ziploc bag. And then I had to like stand it on something because it's a Ziploc bag. So, so I did put it in Tupperware in the end. But um, like I stood the bag in there and waiting for these tests to arrive. And the test arrives. And the guy, like the look on that guy's face was just kind of like, like, you know, like, what's the situation here? Um, but how many, anyway, how many like, girls are pregnant? You. And he's like, like who's, you know, three who's different in this girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I take out the three tests and then I dip them all in and they all fucking like light and day, you know, black and white, pregnant. So yeah, my, I mean, there's that, 
there's that sinking feeling. And I think you know what it feels like, Chris. It's it's like we're on two sides of this situation, but I think we both we both know, right? We both had that sinking feeling of like, oh shit, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I deal with this? Mm-hmm. What's the right thing to do? What's the wrong thing to do? Um, mm-hmm. How do I get through this? Like, what are my values, right? Because in that moment, you question, what are your values? What are your priorities? What now? Um, yeah, so I mean, I had spoken to a couple of my friends, family members, trying to kind of like figure it out. Um, but I think, I, obviously, I had spoken to to my partner or ex-partner, right? And I, we had gone through the options and and he was very kind, you know, very like, the, the, I remember the first thing he said was, we'll do whatever you want to do, like whatever you're comfortable with, that's what we'll do. And obviously like the decision is yours and I'm here for whatever the option is. Like, you know, if you decide to not have it, I'm obviously going to be there for you and take care of you. And if you decide to have it, you know, me and my family will both be there to support you, which I thought was very lucky. I think I was very lucky to be in a position where someone says something like that. They come from that mindset and they're, uh, and and they say that, right? And that was very lucky for me. It took a lot of pressure off of me. But I also knew when I really gave it thought, when I really, you know, I spent those days, because it, it took me a good couple of weeks to make a decision. And I knew I was on the on a clock, right? And, and it's just like you. There's a ticking clock and you kind of have to make a decision if you're going to do something or not. I think when it really came down to it, what I knew was this is not the right partner for me. I always wanted ha- to have a baby. I always knew I wanted to have a baby ever since I was a baby. So part of me was thinking, is this it? Is this how I have a baby? But I think I made a very conscious decision that I don't just want a baby to fill some kind of like hole of me not having had a, a traditional family, that kind of nuclear family. So I was like, what I actually really want is to have a partner and a family that we build together and not just a baby to whatever, right? To to kind of deal with some kind of trauma that I had before. Uh, so those were things I knew. And I also knew if, if we end up being friends afterwards, it would be great, but it's not, I don't want to just be connected to this person through us having some, you know, having had a baby together. And I also knew I really wanna do more with my career but my biggest fear was the abortions uh, in the country where I was were illegal. So I would have to illegally get an abortion, which was terrifying to me because I, I didn't really even know where to begin. Like, where do you, what do you do? So obviously like I was Googling things. Um, but I also was in therapy at that point, which was great because obviously this was a massive thing to go through. And I was so lucky to, to have been in therapy at that point. Um, so yeah, my therapist happened to know to know a doctor that was able to have uh, a conversation with me online, and we sorted out an option to for me to get the abortion pill, and I took the pill uh, at home. Uh, uh, my ex partner was there, and it was probably one of the worst experiences I had ever gone through in my life. Um, Yeah, I don't wish it on my worst enemy. I don't have any enemies, but if I had them, that's nothing. Like, yeah, I would not wish them even anything remotely as close to that. It was insufferable pain for four hours straight. Um, Well, much longer than that, but that like the most intense bit of it where literally everything comes out of you. So you're vomiting, you've got blood coming out of you and it's not just blood, it's like, it's kind of like someone's like inside of you and tearing things out. Like you feel physically something's pulling out of you and the blood clots that come out of you are literally the size of a lemon. It, 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 it's insufferable. And at the same time, you've got diarrhea. So it's disgusting. So you're vomiting. So sitting on the toilet with like everything coming out of me, like hugging a bin and vomiting at the same time and... 
I was shivering. I was cold but hot. And I just like, I swear to God for about what felt like eternity, but it was probably just 10 minutes. I felt like I'm going to die. This is how I died. This is, this is me having done something that was irresponsible gotten myself into this situation and then decided to illegally do something. I don't even know where these pills come from. I don't even know what they call. There was no packaging on it because they can't send it to you with packaging because it's illegal. I'm going to die. This is, this is how I died. This is how my parents are going to find out about my death and, and, you know, and the rest of the world. And, and it was just the darkest, darkest place. But, but I got out of it. I mean, I, I was, I was so white that I was blue and obviously like I'm quite tan but I was so white that I was blue and um and my ex-partner at the time was just like I think we have to go to the hospital like I think you're gonna you know and they say in the instructions that you receive you know if it gets really bad you, you do have to go to the emergency room and say you know you've lost a baby or whatever um so yeah it, it was horrible I mean I was out for two days um straight at work uh I mean at Physically, I was just in bed. Work was amazing because I told my boss, I was really honest with my boss and he gave me two weeks off and he was just like, do not touch anything. Take this time, you know, process. And so that was really amazing. But but otherwise, yeah, it was it was horrible. So obviously there, were, there, there are thoughts of like, did I commit murder? Did I just kill something? You know, and even though I'm pro-choice and I'm my mind's scientific. I don't, you know, I don't really believe in God. I don't believe in, like, I know, I know that at that, that point, the fetus would have been like a pea size, right? So there's no, it's not like, but but you think about it and there's there's definitely a sense of guilt and just kind of like, you know, did I lose a baby? And, um, and, and what if, what if I go to prison for doing mm. an illegal abortion on top right. of it all? Yeah. That's nuts, man. That that sounds fucking horrible. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not, you know, didn't sound like an easy decision. And especially the, the repercussions, right? It's easy, I guess, for us guys to be like, yeah, you should maybe not keep it. But to actually go through it is um, it's a whole nother thing. And it sounds horrible. And actually, I've, uh, well, Ola, I told you this, but I don't think anybody else really knows, but... I also went through this with my first girlfriend at university. So I was like maybe like 20, 21. She was like 19, 20. Mm. And yeah, she told me when we were on holiday. Oh, no, I was on holiday. I was in Spain visiting my friends and she was back at home. And then she like calls me and I'm like, what the hell? Like, I'm in Spain, you know, back back in the day when like international calls were ridiculous, right? It's not Wi-Fi or whatever. And yeah. And it was um, also pretty crazy. And, you know, um, I also was there when we went to, you know, the clinic and mm. she had the pill as well because we, 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 we caught it on, you know, the early phase. And, um, but yeah, I mean, she was just in so much pain as well. It was, um, it's hard to see someone go through that. And I think your ex-partner probably could say the same. It's like, you can't really do anything, right? Like, and then obviously you you have felt it firsthand. So oh, it's a fucking crazy subject. And I think us speaking about this stuff, as you were saying earlier, I think a lot of people go through this shit. You just don't hear about it because people are maybe ashamed or think less of themselves if they tell you. Like, it's just, but it's just so, it's just the realities of life. I'm not even going to say it's normal, right? It's just mm -hmm. the fucking realities of life. And this is, the kind of shit that happens because we're humans and still still biological before we upload our minds, but it's fucking nuts, mate. No, yeah, and 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 the thing is, it's it's funny because you and I are both quite you know open people. We're we're outspoken. You know, we consider ourselves really open minded, and we don't shy away from like hard subjects, right? Both both you and I are kind of just like we talk about everything and anything, and we try to be as honest about it as possible, and just kind of like let people into our lives. And you know, like when we were starting this podcast, um, when I joined, I think that was the outset of it. Was like, okay, we're gonna be just honest, right? So, so keeping that in mind, I mean, like. Even though we're those people, when 
we had this subject and you and I were chatting in kind of like chatting processing and then chatting about potentially doing this series, I was still so hesitant. I was like, you know, can we really talk about it? You know, um, can I talk about my thing? And and so you're absolutely right. I don't think there's enough out there about this. I don't think there's enough out there for people to be able to see, okay, when I'm in this situation, what is the actual thinking? What is the actual process? How do I actually evaluate what's the right direction? What's the wrong direction? Is there a right or wrong? You know, where do we go from here? Um, so I think... I think it's really hard. I, I think what helped me at least when I was in my situation was being able to talk honestly with everybody. Um, I think for a couple of years, I had already been in that space in my life where I'm just really honest about everything, no matter who it is. Um, and, and usually you find the hardest thing to do is to be that honest with people that you're most close with, with which is your parents, right? Like your, your closest kind of family and and that I think it's really hard to just kind of say the honest truth, no matter what it is, because you're afraid of a disappointment, right? You're afraid of like, how's my dad going to react? And and uh, for people that don't know uh, us that well, and they're just kind of like listeners that that join, my dad is like the most conservative person I know to have existed. He's gotten a bit mellower now that he's reaching 70, but like, for all of my life, like I wasn't allowed outside of the house past 6 p.m. So like if it was 6 p.m., I had to rush home. Um, you know, he'd call me like 10 times a day, checking up on me, everything. Like he didn't speak to me for a year when I moved out of the house. So he's like this extremely strict person who I think I was like 24, uh, had a conversation with me about virginity. Like he was like, you know, he was like, you know, basically saying to me that if I lose my virginity, then I'm losing something really precious. It's just very conservative man. So when I was going through this, um, my dad was visiting me uh, after this happened. And I was like, I think I need to tell my dad because it's become such a big part of me. It's become like, like, like it's almost shaped a bit of who I am now as like this new chapter of my adulthood that I need to tell him, otherwise he doesn't really know me and it would be such a pity for him not to really know me for who, all of I, who I am. So yes, yeah, so I told my dad and it was probably one of the most touching moments in my life because uh, when he was leaving, we're at the airport, um, he was crying, he was crying and he was saying, you know, you need to tell me, yeah. He's like, you need to tell me everything, you know, whether it's good or bad because you live so far away that if, if you don't do that, I don't have any other source of information and I can't be there to help you. And never in my life did I expect to hear that from my Vietnamese father. Like, I mean, we all know Asian parents. It's like cut up fruit is the way they express love to you. Like, you know, they bring you your favorite roast pork. That's the way they say I love you. Like they don't say stuff. So so that made me cry, and, but but it also made me feel so good because it's like when we're vulnerable, we allow the other person to be vulnerable. And it was such a beautiful moment for me. Yeah, big shout outs to roast pork, by the way. <laughs> big shout out. Crispy pork, what's up? Crispy pork, um, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so um, on, a, on a side tangent, I think that was, that was like super touching and your dad's a fucking hero. And may, maybe if he stepped up earlier and was like, hey, it's okay, you know. I could be vulnerable with my girl. It would have been nice, but you know, at, at least you, at least he um, turned around and said that, you know, um, at his ripe old age. Um, for, yeah. Side tangent from me is that my mum actually mentioned on the offhand, and it was very like random, mm. that I could have had um, another sibling, but she decided not to. And this was actually ah. when I was, yeah, this was when I was like. 15 16 and we were like on the way to some fucking like chinese supermarket in london and it was like, just like it was like this is not the time to be honest right like it's just one of the like yeah. standard runs you do when you're in a restaurant right and i remember she she telling me and i didn't ask too much about it because i was like what like what i could have had a sibling that would have been awesome but maybe a subject that i i should speak to my mom more about but i know that she said quite definitely that um i could have had a sibling but they decided Two kids were enough, and that that was that. And yeah, kind of 
kind of strange now. I hear about uh, your parents, and that just reminded me of mine. But yeah, so crazy. It, it's interesting because <clears throat> my mom actually had had a couple of abortions. So mm. I, I I also found this out not that long ago, also a couple of years back. Um, my dad, after having my brother, didn't want to have more kids. So my mom, he asked my mom to have a couple of abortions. She's lost some kids in like miscarriages, but there was a couple of kids between me and my brother because my brother is 11 years older. So, so there was a couple of them there. And then she got pregnant with me and she knew my dad would want to abort. So she actually left to Vietnam. She was pregnant with me in Bulgaria. She left to Vietnam to essentially give birth to me. She basically almost ran, ran away to give birth to me. So... When I think about it that way, I'm a bit like, I could have not existed. The chance of me existing was so low because of how many miscarriages she's had, how many abortions she's had to have. So, yeah, I kind of like, I'm really grateful for my life. And I think when when I was making my decision, I, I definitely had considered it. And I definitely was like, am I depriving, you know, someone like you know that could have been me right that could have been me that decision so i definitely mm. thought about it um but yeah some ways of coping with it you know that the therapist was talking about was just kind of making sure you that you don't forget that life that existed so we we actually um after the abortion uh, and after i was feeling fine uh we buried a seed so it was a peach seed we buried it inside uh, a plant and we wrote a little note uh for for the baby for for the fetus um just kind of like you'll always be loved and you'll always be remembered and we we named the baby and and you know we signed it like mom and dad and we kind of like buried it in a plant and i think that was a really beautiful ritual that like kind of helped me kind of close have closure and just kind of like close that chapter um and then i've done death anniversaries so you know in vietnam you kind of do death anniversaries so like you celebrate that person's life uh, on the day they had passed away so i've done that i kind of like let flowers go in the water and just i think it's important to do that uh, and the therapist told me you know when you have future kids a, a good way of, of commemorating of you know remembering the the child would be to say you know you're not the first child um and that's and that's a nice way of just kind of like you know uh memori memorializing them so i think that was that definitely helped help me but anyway so i brought all of this up and, and kind of like my context because i had an initial reaction to your news um which i had expected to be 100% on Sarah's side, right? I was going to, like, th now that I'm thinking about it, like, logically, my initial reaction would have been like, Chris, you fucking have to do everything in your power, right? Um, for Sarah. But I was really surprised because, you know, even as a feminist, as a person that believes in equality, as a person that believes in everyone's rights, as a person that has gone through this, uh, my initial reaction was so completely unexpectedly dude-like. I, for some reason, completely forgot that I'm a girl. I forgot everything that I went through. I forgot, because all I could see in that situation was, here's somebody I really care about, and they're facing the situation, and all I care about is their well-being. And there was a massive bias. It sound right, boy. 